The following programme contains no firearms, no scenes of hunting, no violence and no cruelty to animals. All guns shown are compressed air in spring, CO2 or pre-charge forms. The programme is aimed at being informative, entertaining and, above all, promoting safety. It is only made possible by the help from the following people who make up the production team and who give up their time and expertise free of charge. Hello and welcome to Andy's Air Gun Review. I receive a lot of comments from people who watch the channel and occasionally I receive one that makes me stop and think. This one from Hedgerow Pete was just one of those comments. Sometimes we can be guilty of taking things for granted and it's very easy to do that when it comes to reviewing guns. Sometimes it's a balancing act to let people know the interesting bits without doing too much on the boring side. Boring, that is, if you already know about it. Well, it's probably about time I put together more of a beginner's guide to air guns, but hopefully with some interesting stuff for the experienced shooters as well. Hedro P also asks for more angles real-time shots, etc. Well, I currently use three cameras when shooting to try and get as many angles as possible. And there is usually action shots on the guns as well. Sadly, I am the cameraman, sound man, producer and, well, everything. So I will continue to do as many angles, etc. as possible, but sadly, there is a limit. So, where do I start with the beginner's guide? Firstly, I sat down with a piece of paper and started to write down as much as possible. My intention was to cover all types of guns and systems. Well, in one video it quickly became apparent that that was not feasible. Not unless the film was going to be about an hour long. So, what I'm going to try and do is a guide to CO2 pistols first, and if there is a demand for it, then I will look at springers, PCPs, rifles, FACs, etc. Please let me know in the comments section below if you want to see more of this type of video. CO2 pistols come in all shapes and sizes from modern style to historic replicas, transforming and lots more. It seems companies are thinking up new products all the time, which is great. First of all, let's look at the CO2 part first. Most guns use the CO2 12 gram cartridges, which are disposable, non-refillable and are cheaper the more you buy. So if you've got a few CO2 guns I suggest you buy them in bulk. They work by holding pressurized carbon dioxide in the cartridge. The gun will then pierce the cartridge holding the air in via a seal then a set amount will be released by the gun on each shot. Loading it into the guns can take lots of different forms and here are a few examples.
It's worth noting that some people use a cleaning CO2 cartridge in their guns from time to time. But I found that if you use a drop of oil when you fit them into your gun, this will help keep your gun in tip-top condition and help look after that all-important seal. So once loaded, how much power do you actually get? Well, power is measured in speed and energy, and to make the calculation, you also need to know the weight of the projectile. Most pellets and BBs are graded in grains. If you know two of the three, then you can calculate the other one. There are loads of calculators on the internet to help you. Speed then is measured in feet per second. The energy is then measured in foot pounds or joules. The legal maximum in the UK for pistols is six foot pounds and most guns will be set slightly lower than that to make sure the owner or shooter doesn't accidentally fall foul of the law by shooting some fancy pellets that increase the speed and so increases the power output, resulting in potentially a five year term in prison. The power then is dependent on lots of factors. One, what is the temperature around the gun? Most of us know the fact that cold weather affects the feet per second, but here is an example of how much they are affected. The first set of figures are when firing from room temperature. That would be approximately 19 degrees centigrade. Then the next set show what happens if you warm up the CO2 and the feet per second that can be achieved. Finally, what happens in cold conditions? This was left in the fridge for an hour. So now you can see the true effect. Of course, a CO2 will create its own drop in temperature the faster you use it. So taking time between shots will also help keep the feet per second figures up. Two, what type of gun are you using? Naturally, different guns are set to produce lower feet per second figures than others. The 1911 from Swiss Arms is quite low on power, but this can be due to the fact that it is a blowback gun, which naturally will produce lower figures as some of the air is being used to provide the blowback action, resulting in either lower feet per second or fewer shots, or even both. So why bother with blowback? Well, it's simply a case of adding realism to the gun and great fun they are too. Three, the type of ammunition you use will also affect the feet per second. You could be using lightweight alloy pellets, which will produce a higher figure. Alternatively, you could be using heavyweight lead pellets, which are cheaper and slower, but will quite often give a higher energy rating at the target, because it's all about balancing speed and weight. Naturally, the faster the pellet is traveling, the straighter it will fly, and that should add to the gun's accuracy. 
Not all guns use pellets. Some use BBs or ball bearings. These guns are normally cheaper than the pellet equivalent, often due to the fact it doesn't have a rifle barrel where the pellet version does. The rifle barrel helps spin the pellet in the barrel, again adding accuracy. Often a BB gun will have a smooth barrel instead of the rifling effect. Again, BBs come in different weights and materials. The most common type will be the lighter steel BBs in either silver or black, but they're also available in lead or copper. Why different materials? Well, steel BBs are the lowest cost option, but will wear a barrel out because they are very hard and they have a tendency also to ricochet on impact if you're not careful. That obviously can be dangerous, so extra care is required when using the steel BBs. Lead, on the other hand, will have a tendency to deform on impact and so the energy is lost, causing less or fewer ricochets. Pellets will also deform more and reduce the ricocheting effect. As we've said though, BBs are usually much cheaper than pellets, so you can see why lots of people use them. BBs can also be loaded into systems and magazines where pellets sometimes can't, but more on that later. Just to add to the options, some guns are dual fuel, so to speak, and will run both types of ammunition, giving you more options. Are there any advantages on this? Not hugely, but we all like to have choices, and gun manufacturers want to provide what we want. I personally would not want to use BBs in a rifle barrel for fear of damage, but running pellets in a BB based gun is not likely to do the same level of potential damage. Whilst we're talking about ammunition, some people like to clean, weigh and oil their pellets in an attempt to gain the maximum performance from their guns. My experience is that this has a very minimal effect on a typical CO2 pistol, but when done correctly can improve a higher power precision gun. But don't over oil them or it can have the opposite effect and can even cause what is known as dieseling, which can increase the velocity of the pellet going down the barrel, but can ultimately damage the gun or the seals on the gun. And of course, it could nudge it over the six foot pound legal limit, and then you find yourself on the wrong side of the law. That said, it's not likely to happen to some of the lower powered CO2 pistols. Okay, four, barrel length. The length of time a pellet or BB spends in the barrel means it is using the air behind it more effectively and efficiently and pushing the projectile faster before it leaves the barrel and then the gas itself is set free to lose its energy into the open air. So the longer the barrel, the higher the potential velocity. It can also be achieved in these revolver type guns by using the correct shells. If they load from the rear rather than the front, the pellet or BB is using the length of the shell as a barrel and it's extending that barrel resulting in higher feet per second. Of course, the next question is how many shots can I get per CO2 cartridge? Again, that is down to the power output of the gun, the temperature and the action of the gun. You'll get fewer shots normally from a blowback than a non-blowback. But expect a figure of between 40 and 60 shots that being around the norm. So remember to buy your CO2 in bulk. 
Next up, I want to show you some of the different methods of loading these guns. Some guns come supplied with spare magazines, and that will keep you shooting for longer between full reloads. Others offer these as optional extras, but they can be pricey, so check them out before you buy the gun if you feel you're going to want to buy lots more magazines. Onto the guns themselves then. Some are made of all metal, some are made of plastic, and most of them seem to be a balance between the two. The metal adds realism with weight and can also balance the gun nicely in the hand. One of the most important things is the safety on the guns and some are more efficient than others. A safety that is slightly stiffer or more complex to put the gun into fire is no bad thing in my books, especially if you have any children in the house. And of course, whilst there is currently no legal requirement to have them in a locked gun safe in the UK, please make sure they are kept securely locked away. Most CO2 pistols will come with open sights. Some are simply fixed and others are adjustable, either up and down for distance correction or side to side for windage or centering of the gun to the target. Some will have the ability to fix external sighting aids such as telescopic sights, red dots, or lasers. These type of sights will usually require time and effort to calibrate or zero them in. And I've also completed a full tutorial video on that subject. So, what about other toys? Well, some will have a rail system, either Picatinny or Weaver, the difference primarily being the width of the rail, Check that out first before you buy any accessories, as these toys can come in different fitments. It opens it up for torches, lasers, grip handles, and many other things to be attached. But not all guns come with this facility. You can also fit silencers or moderators to some pistols, and this can quieten the gun down considerably, if you fit a decent size and quality item. Here is an example of how much quieter they can be. Finally, you can also have some guns that are field strippable, which simply means they can be taken apart for cleaning. These are usually on replica guns to add to the authenticity of the original. Hopefully, this video has gone some way to explaining some of the basics of the CO2 gun. But of course, this is by no means the only type of air gun that is out there. Please feel free to leave a comment or any information you feel I may have missed out. But as we said at the start, this is primarily aimed at the beginners in the hope that they can join our sport armed with a little more knowledge and then have years of enjoyment. Thanks for watching.